Hey guys, it's Faye from Face World Media. In this video, I'm gonna show you 18 top tips every Zoom host and moderator must know and review prior to their event. It's almost like a checklist for before, during, and after the event for you to make sure you run a super smooth session with whether it's a few dozens, hundreds, or thousands of attendees. <laughs> I've conducted dozens of these sessions 101, as well as group and corporate trainings. I noticed that these tips always surface to the top. Yet, as a Zoom host or moderator, you get very distracted and stressed out right before your big events. Therefore, this video serves as the go-to place for you to know and review everything. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Taylor Brands, an AI-driven one-stop shop for small business owners. With everything you need to jumpstart logos, LLC, business mailbox, websites, social media posts, merch, and so much more. Believe it or not, over the years, I have learned that so many Zoom hosts, events, and small business owners just don't have the time to really market and brand the events. Maybe that's about taking the time to design a logo, some graphic arts, putting together a set of social media posts to send to their influencers, their panelists. Organizing an event and making it happen is a really big task. Therefore, marketing and branding sort of become an afterthought sometimes. That's where Taylor Brands comes into play, and it's fun, effortless, yet makes it look very professional. Check it out, within just a few minutes, Taylor Brands AI tool helps you put together not just a logo, but many different variations of logos you can choose from. And if you're running an event, they also have these ready-made templates for social media on multiple platforms for you to put together posts, stories, or videos. Perhaps this is the best part. Taylor Brands costs only $3.99 a month to start, and with the code FEIWU40, you get an additional 40% off. So let me do the math for you. That's less than $30 a year. So give it a shot. If you don't like it, you can cancel it at any time. And you got to keep everything you created and all the digital assets. With that said, let's please get started with 18 tips for your next big Zoom event. Now, under my view, you want to make sure that you have speakers selected. And then under attendee view, you're going to have follow hosts view. I can never emphasize this enough. Spotlight is the most important feature for hosts and co-hosts. Here's why especially when you have different panelists joining the sessions throughout. The last thing you want to do is somebody making a sound or unintentionally appear on screen. So Spotlight will help you avoid that. Whoever you choose to put under Spotlight, that is the one person or two people or a small group of people that you Spotlight on screen to be seen by all the attendees. So let me show you how Spotlight works. Right now, I'm also logged in as an attendee. So as you can see here under Faye on mobile, don't freak out if all of a sudden you have, let's say a co-host or a panelist joined by accident and appeared under attendee, simply click on under their name more and you can promote them to a panelist. Super simple. Once they're being promoted, they're going to see a message on their device and I'm going to go ahead and confirm real quick. So here, as you can see, I have Faye on mobile as the panelist. But that's the thing, right? Like I don't want this to automatically appear once a new panelist would join. So how do I make sure that I stay as under spotlight? Number one, you want to make sure you have participants, this panel here pulled out so I can spotlight myself or anyone else who are hosts, co-hosts or panelists in these two different ways. Number one, click on more and spotlight for everyone. Here I am. But what if I am now interviewing Faye on mobile? What I can do is also go to Faye on mobile, click on more, but here's a requirement. I cannot spotlight anybody without video turned on. So let me go ahead and turn on video. Here I am, half of my face, and let me point to a very artistic corner of my office. And now I go to Faye on mobile, and I can now add to spotlight. I can also do replace. Now, if I do replace, now it's my hand, all right? You don't want that. So we can now add another person to spotlight. The orientation is based on how I'm sitting and how big my window is. Now, let me go ahead and remove my hand from the spotlight. Remember that this is not only what you see, but also what other uh, attendees and panelists and everyone on the call is seeing. One thing I want to call out, a lot of hosts and co-hosts and panelists don't realize that, is that this little window right here, or you have more people, that whole role of people in your meeting as coordinators and co-hosts, 
That can only be seen by the internal team. The attendees will only be able to see just my video window right now. They will not be able to see anybody sort of backstaged. So this little top area, this black bar here, anybody you see here is backstaged. A really, really important feature. I can never emphasize this enough. Um, people would ask me all the time when they pay for consulting one-on-one or training their team is say, do I really need an operator? Do I really need co-hosts? The answer is almost 110% yes, especially when you're running a really large Zoom meeting. You absolutely need people who can be there and help you out. Even a small task such as Spotlight, a lot of hosts and moderators try to spotlight different speakers themselves. It's impossible because as a host, you have to follow an agenda and, uh, there's so much that you need to take care of. The last thing you want to do is have to spotlight one or two more people. Also, when you run a panel, now you have more than one person to spotlight. Sometimes you may have six or seven. It takes time. If you have one or even two more people to help you behind the scenes, it's just going to save you so much headache. Zoom recently turned off the co-host feature. So if you are reinstalling Zoom or you're signing up for a new account, the chance of co-host not existing for you is somewhat serious. So let me show you real quick how to turn on the co-host feature. What you need to do is just simply open up a browser and then go to zoom.us. Make sure you're logging into your account. If you're like me having multiple accounts, you really want to double check this. Then scroll down under admin, go to account management, then go into account settings. The options are endless, as you probably noticed already. So here in the search settings bar, I'm going to type in co-host with a dash. Now I'm going to hit center right here. This is the option you're seeing meeting in meeting basic and make sure that this little pill button here is turned on and it shows blue. Without this turned on, you will not be able to make anyone else in your Zoom meeting or webinar a co-host. That can be problematic after you started your webinar uh, practice session or the real session. You can't really make this change while you're in meeting. So make sure you do this prior. This is what I mean. If I'm able to, you know, make Feiyang Mobile a co-host, I'm able to see this option right here. Also, a lot of the hosts and co-hosts will ask me questions about Q&A. Faye, should I ask people to type in questions right here inside chat or should I really use the Q&A feature? Now, I have a pretty strong opinion. It's actually easy to do. Now, if your meeting is, let's say, more than 20, 30 people, but in the hundreds or even thousands, chances are you probably don't want to use this little chat window here for people to drop their questions. For a variety of reasons. Number one, it can get a little chit chatty, can get a little small talk. A regular chat is really not an opportunity for people to pitch real questions, something that's really thoughtful, something they want to make sure the host or the panelists will address. So I think the chat is best utilized for people just to connect with one another. You also probably want to make sure you have a moderator to make sure there is no, not just negative comments, but profanity in there. So I recommend you using this Q and A feature as much as you can. And for attendees, they can easily ask a question. When a question is being asked, the question will be dropped inside this little window here. So let me show you how. First, I need to demote myself to be an attendee. There I am. So let me go ahead and just type in a question so you see exactly what it looks like. I just asked a first question and guess what? I am going to ask another question. So as you can imagine, when you have hundreds or even thousands of people joining you during the webinar, these questions are going to pile up very quickly. Now, if you are a moderator or co-host, you're able to pitch this question, select the question and communicate that to the facilitator, which I'm going to talk about in a second. And you can choose to say, answer the question live. So if Joe Schmo is currently answering the question live, there you go. Once it's done, you just click on done, right? Super simple. You can also choose to type the answer. So this can be very handy, right? You just type an answer. Now, a lot of operators and people who work um, in the business will know the answers to some of the more generic questions, but might not be something super intricate. So you can definitely leverage a team, even like a customer service support team, depending on the nature of your webinar. And once uh, questions are answered, as you can see here, they're all listed here. So that's your reason here. Also, you can actually dismiss um, a question as well, whether something has been answered or you think a question is not relevant for the current webinar discussion. Some of you guys fear the chat. And what if you can enable and disable chat while you're during the Zoom webinar? So look to your lower right hand corner. 
Right here, if you choose attendee can chat with no one like this, then they can chat with no one, not the host, not the panelists. So you can actually turn this on and off at any time. Attendees can chat with hosts and panelists or everyone. It's completely up to you. Here's another option. A lot of people worry, what if panelists will join and all of a sudden their audio just started playing because they forgot to mute themselves. So right here under the more option, which is slightly above the chat window, click on more and you can choose mute panelists upon entry. Remember that by default, you will not see a check mark next to play, join and leave sound because who want to hear those sounds? You can also double check that once you are inside the webinar. Now I have a few things I have to reiterate as things that you don't necessarily do within the Zoom platform or the Zoom app. Something that you definitely want to do um, prior to your webinar. Number one is to create a clear agenda. Now there are many agenda templates. That's something you don't want to skim on. An agenda should be detailed, should have a start and end time for everything. And also I want to mention that you want to pay attention to the transition. If an agenda has two different items with no clear direction on who's making that transition, you know, things such as, Hey, Faye, if you're hosting the session and now next up is going to be Adam, who's introducing Adam? Should he be on the screen with you? Should he be spotlight next to the facilitator or the host of the session? These decisions absolutely need to be made ahead of time. And it can't really be made by you as a host or co-host in isolation. You have to talk to the meeting organizer. You have to talk to the people or the person who is facilitating the session. Another idea that I want to mention as it really confuses people is whenever Zoom say that you are a host, but that's kind of a technical term from within Zoom. A Zoom host doesn't necessarily translate to the actual host of the session. The host of the webinar, for instance, is someone who's going to open, close the session, introducing guests, really kind of facilitate and organize the agenda. So you as an operator or whatever the role you may be, if you're a host, co-host, moderator or facilitator, you really want to get this group of people in the same room or via a Zoom call to figure out exactly who each person is doing, what and when. As part of the agenda, which is really important since I've organized, you know, thousand person webinars several times as part of the agenda, especially when you have panelists coming in, you know, from inside or outside of the company, people you may need to compensate most likely to uh, join your webinar. You want to have their contact information as part of the agenda, at least for the version for the internal team. The worst case scenario, as we have experienced in the past, you know, medical emergencies or personal leaves, they just cannot really be there with you during the webinar anymore. So you need a clear way for them to reach you and for you to reach them. Also as a co-host or someone who's supporting the meeting, as soon as you find out about this information, you need to find a way to immediately pass it on to the main facilitator of the session. That actually leads to the next major point. You do not want to rely on the built-in Zoom webinar chat window in the lower right-hand corner here to communicate with your team because by accident, you may not be chatting with each other, but sending something accidentally to the attendees. You want to avoid that at all costs. Sometimes the information are not relevant to the panelists, only to you, co-hosts, co-hosts and facilitators. So make sure you have a third party or an app that's off of Zoom webinar to communicate with one another. Now, I recommend that you have that conversation. You can use text messages or I can recommend Google chat. Most people have a Gmail running and it's also free and it's off of the Zoom platform. So you want to have this conversation ahead of time for sure. Also, some hosts would ask me, Faye, what is the experience like uh, for an attendee? I really want to know. Well, good news is that you're able to uh, practice your Zoom webinar and actually set up a secondary device, whether you can use a desktop. I also recommend that you check out the mobile experience as well and simply send yourself an attendee link so that you know exactly what the attendees are seeing. As you're starting the session, just log in as an attendee and make sure you understand what they're seeing and that needs to align with your expectation. Speaking of which, there is a practice session feature for all the Zoom webinars when you set things up. If you don't know what that looks like, here's on the screen, you will see that under webinar options, meaning when you first set up the webinar, there's something called enable practice session. I always want to enable practice session. Now that feature allows you to see that blue button and make sure that you don't start the webinar until everybody hosts, co-hosts and panelists are there, whoever you need to kick off that webinar. 
Now, there's another inherent benefit that I like really a lot is that that I recommend everybody to have these practice sessions as much as possible. You can use your exact Zoom webinar information, ID, link, everything the same to run all your practice sessions days and even weeks prior to the webinar. It is valid and it will not expire your Zoom webinar. So you're able to use the same information to conduct as many of the internal practice sessions as you need. Last but not least, during the session that day as a host, co-host facilitator, um, especially for the person on screen, let's just call that person a facilitator. That is key, right? So um, number one, whether that session is long or short, you want someone who is prepared, capable, and have the knowledge and the information in hand to step up as needed to be a facilitator. So imagine that I am Faye facilitating a 5,000 person webinar and all of a sudden, my power is cut out, my Wi-Fi stops working, and I'm the only person with the script, with the agenda, we got a problem. Make sure among co-hosts, someone is able to step up as needed. I mentioned a mobile or secondary device earlier. This is actually really critical. The moment you lose power, Wi-Fi, separately or all together, you're able to immediately log into this device and then begin or continue to facilitate from there. So that is really huge. I always have a secondary device with me so that even if another co-host needs to step up briefly for a couple of minutes, then you're able to join back into the meeting. This leads to the last point that if you have an agenda, make sure that on the top of the agenda for your internal notes, you want to list clearly the Zoom webinar ID and join information so that you don't have to start looking for it again during the meeting. Right, you have something that's clearly written and is right next to you with a pen. I got to say this analog device situation is still quite helpful for a lot of us running these big digital virtual meetings. I'm so glad you're able to watch this entire video. I try to include as many details as possible and remind me what else you have learned through your experience. That's just going to help everybody who's watching these videos. I also included a complete free webinar checklist. I want you to definitely download, share with your colleagues, with your friends. There's so many things that we didn't really get a chance to talk about during this video. Things like telling your mailman or telling your lawn guys not to show up on that day or leave a note on your door. So make sure people don't ring the bell or keep banging on the door while you're trying to facilitate a session. Small things, but they really go a long way once they're taken care of. I hope you find this helpful. If you have unique needs, if you need someone to rehearse your Zoom webinar with you one-on-one -on -one, or perhaps with your team, small or big, please let me know how I can help. I listed my consulting link down below. It's really easy to schedule a session with me and I've run dozens of facilitation and webinar moderator training sessions. Today's video is sponsored by Taylor Brands. I've included a link in the description. Make sure you check it out. Taylor Brands package starts at just $3.99 a month. And with the special code FEIWU40, you're able to take 40% off. You may be wondering if this is a Zoom webinar, why is it important to think about branding? In fact, that perhaps if you're a bigger corporation, you have a design, you have a marketing team, you have all these assets ready to go for social media, for Zoom webinars, but a lot of us small business owners simply just don't have the leverage to do that. Even if you don't have a logo at the moment, you're able to design it so quickly. Be sure to check out Taylor Brands with my discount Feiwu40 in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.